Good morning, pre-algebra. Oh, sixth grade is glorious when you're stuck at home doing school, isn't it? Yes. This is what I'm feeling. It's going to be an awesome day. Let's do some math. So we're going to spend um, our math time today going back and reviewing um, simplifying radicals. I'm pretty sure we've done this before. Sometimes I get lost in what we've done and what we haven't done, but I'm pretty sure we've taken a look at this before, so let's take a look at it today, okay? And if we haven't and you lost, then then contact me and we'll do a one-on-one -on -one lesson. It's, a, it's not a problem, okay? So we know that the square root of 9 equals 3, right? The square root of 9 is 3. And in fact, we could also know that, that if I put a negative, like a minus in front of this here, negative square root of 9. This is like negative 1, there's an invisible negative 1 here, times the square root of 9, which would give me negative 3, okay? Now there's no such thing as a square root of negative 9 under the radical, this thing is called the radical, but there is, we could put negative 1 times the square root of 9, which equals negative 3. Okay, so, so that comes up on one of the pages today. So if there's a negative sign, and you can see my work, right? You can see my examples. So um, if I have the square root of 113, and I can't, um, I can't take the square root of 113, and I can't simplify that radical, there's no perfect square factor of 113, then what I know is that I could stick this into a calculator, let me grab my calculator. Okay, you got yours. Let's see, I've got my beautiful white calculator here. Um, on this calculator, I think we've talked about it before, I would do second and then the little carrot button right there. So second, little rooftop, and that gives me the square root, and then I put in 113 and... Um, and I get something, I get actually get 10.6. So I put this in and I realize that this is closer to 11 than it is to 10. And so I'm going to go ahead and actually change that to 11 because we're looking for an approximation here. So round, your question on the um, pages asks you to round to the nearest whole number. All right, this little squiggly equal sign means approximately equals, like almost equals, is close to. So this is something that you'll see on there. You'll see the square root of fractions. Now the fractions on the paper that I've given you are have perfect squares in their numerators and denominators. And if we go back to what we know about fractions and radicals, a square root asks us what number times itself gives me what's under the radical, and three sevenths times three sevenths gives me nine forty ninths, right? Three times three, multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Okay, remember your snap and multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. Okay, so that's multiplying fractions. So I can take the square root of the fraction very, very easily. Let's take a look at if we have to simplify a radical that is not a perfect square. So I'm going to simplify the square root of 500. Okay, so the square root of 500 I can take, I can break it into two radicals. On the left, I'm going to put the radical with the largest perfect square factor I can find, right? So if I look at 500, it's divisible by 4, so I could have put 4 over there. But the largest factor of 500 that is also a perfect square is 100. So I took 100 and I put it on the left. And then what is left? 5, right? 100 times 5 equals 500. So I put this into a radical on the right. And I do that because I want to be able to actually take the square root of whatever's on the left, have the radical do its job on that number, right? Take the square root of it. So the square root of 100 is 10. And I can't take the square root of 5 without putting it into a calculator. So I'm going to leave it as a radical. And, write, and I say this 10 root 5. Okay, so there are several examples of those I'd like you to do, please, and you can see all of my work and my examples to help you, right? So please take a look at that. And then we've got some examples where we've got some variables under the radical. Again, we're going to do this 
piece by piece, right? Piece by piece. First the numbers, then the X's, then the Y's, then the Z's. All right, so I usually open up two big radicals next to each other, and then I sort of sort left and right what's a perfect square and what's not. All right, let me scooch over to this side here. So I've got this 500. We just looked at 500. So I know that 500 splits into 100, which is its, the perfect square factor, and 5. So I split those into the two radicals. Then I looked at x to the third. That is x times x times x, right? One of them is a perfect square, x squared, and one of them is not. So I put the perfect square, the biggest perfect square in the left, and then x in the right. y to the seventh. The largest perfect square in y to the seventh is y to the sixth, because y to the third times y to the third equals y to the sixth. So I can put y to the sixth on the left and y on the right. And z is a perfect square, right? z to the fifth times z to the fifth. We remember, we, we explored this, we looked at how exponents that are even, if anything with an even exponent, is a perfect square, right? So I put the z to the tenth there. So now, one by one, again, I'm going to take the square root of what is in this radical on the left, 100. The square root of 100 is 10. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y to the sixth is y to the third. The square root of z to the tenth is z to the fifth, and then I just keep that xy. So I would say this, 10x y to the third z to the fifth root 5xy. Okay? So we're doing radicals today, I'm giving you a bunch of examples. Um, please, do, please try to do all of it and ask me if you have any questions. Have a great day.